All right, 10.1 limits and motion the tangent problem. So this is going to be our first look into calculus because we're in pre-calculus and we want to uh, get a head start on next year, right? So we have, we want to look at average velocity. Average velocity equals the change in position over the change in time. And we're going to first look at some notation that we might see like in our book or next year in calculus that if we talk about average velocity, velocity is usually represented by a V. Since we want the average, they might put a subscript of AVE for average or AVG or something. But velocity, the average velocity equals and then when we talk about the change in something, a lot of times they'll use this Greek letter delta. And uh, so that's that means change. You might have seen that before. That's sometimes used in slope formulas. Uh, and then position, they actually use, strangely enough, an S for. So the change in position is delta S over delta for change, T for time. So this is something that's in your book and you may see some next year as things written with deltas. And definitely your position function is, is not going to be like D for distance or even P for position. You're going to see S's for some reason and I don't know why. For some reason they picked S. So let's just do a problem where we're finding average velocity. A bicyclist travels 21 miles in 1 hour and 45 minutes. What is her average velocity? So her average velocity is her change in position, which is 21 miles, over her change in time, which is 1.75 hours. If we divide that, we get 12 miles per hour. Now that's, that's something that is useful to be able to find. But here's the thing. If on this trip, she averaged 12 miles per hour, that means that she had to have gone more than 12 miles per hour for part of the trip and less than 12, 12 miles per hour for a little bit. Because if you think about it, wouldn't she start at zero miles per hour and then she would get faster? And then depending on where she's bicycling, she would have stop signs and she'd have to turn or do curves. So what if we want to know what her velocity is at a certain time during her trip? How do we figure that out? And down here, actually, another way of thinking of it is the instantaneous velocity problem. And Galileo is one of the people who really first thought about this a whole lot, according to our book. Um, if we have a ball rolling down a hill, what is the ball's velocity three seconds after it starts to roll? So we've got some hill that, you know, maybe it bottoms out here at the end and the ground kind of flattens. We have a ball that we set in motion rolling down it. You know, what if we want to know three seconds after we roll it, what's its velocity? How do we figure that out? Well, the answer is we're going to use calculus. All right, we want to do the, we want to figure out the instantaneous rate of change, or we want to know how do I find the instantaneous rate of change of something at a particular point. So we're going to use the, I, the concept of the derivative, which is, I mean, this is half of calculus. Um, if not more, is taking derivatives of things. So the derivative of the function f at x equals a denoted by f apostrophe a and red f prime of a, which we've recently come across that kind of notation, so that should be familiar, is we have this right here. We would say that f prime of a, which a is going to be some a number that they tell us. They're going to tell us, hey, at t equals 2, what is your what is your instantaneous velocity? So at f prime of some number that equals the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. So what's going on here is that we would like to, in these problems, be able to plug in, you know, whatever time it is that we have. Um, but because we're we're trying to find the velocity not over a really big interval, but at, at a particular point. Basically, we're saying that if I can look at the, if I look at the speed as close as possible to 2 with a limit, that I'm going to end up with that velocity 
uh, that instantaneous velocity at that point. Now in our book, um, and we're going to talk about the last part of this line a little bit later, in our book, they, the problems they give us right off the bat, instead of having F and x's in it, it has s and t. So that's what this formula over here is for, so that you know what to plug in whenever they give you s of t instead of f of x. So let's try this example too. We want the position, well, the, the position of an object at time t is given by s of t. Find the instantaneous velocity at the indicated value of t. So this is s of t at t equals 2, this right here is going to be our a, because this is the time that we care about, is at 2. So we're going to say s prime of 2, because a is 2, equals the limit as t approaches 2 of s of t minus s of a over t minus a. Wait, well a is 2, sorry, a is 2. So where we where a is, we're going to put in 2s. Okay, so we want to evaluate this limit, and the way we do that is by simplifying this as much as possible so that we can plug in t as 2. If right now we try to put a 2 here, we end up with 2 minus 2, which is 0, which is bad. So we're going to have to do some work, not a ton of work, but some work to simplify this down so that we end up with something that we can plug into 2. Anyway, so s of t, we're going to plug in t squared plus 5 right here. Then we're going to plug in s of 2. So we're going to plug in a 2 here and then, and then find out what that is. So every time that you rewrite a step, you need to put the limit as t approaches 2. It is very important that you show your work, as always. Um, so up here, s of t is t squared plus 5 minus s of 2 is what we'd get if we plug in a 2, like so, over t minus 2. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to figure out what is 2 squared plus 5. 2 squared plus 5 is 9. So I'm going to rewrite this as the limit as t approaches 2 of t squared. I'm going to do 5 minus 9, which is negative 4, over t minus 2. Okay, well this looks a lot more reasonable to me at least. We can factor the top here. So we would say this is the limit as t approaches 2. On top I would have t plus 2 and t minus 2. On the bottom I have t minus 2. So this is going to cancel and leave me with the limit as t approaches 2 of just t plus 2. Now I can plug in a 2 right here where t is. I can say this equals whatever 2 plus 2 is, so this equals 4. So whatever this this object is that is is going t squared plus 5 at time 2 their velocity is 4, whatever units it happens to be. And so that's how we would work that particular problem. All right, so let's talk about this whole, con the geometric concept of a derivative that was on that previous definition. Finding the derivative of a function actually gives us the slope of a line tangent to that function. Uh, for example, what is the slope of f of x equals x squared? Well, we should all know that f of x equals x squared would be a parabola. So what is the slope of this parabola? Well, there are a lot of slopes in this parabola. It's not like a line where we can say there is the same rate of change going on, the same increase in x and the same increase in y going on the whole time. Here, at each point, we have basically a different rate of change going on. 
okay, at 1. If I drew a line tangent to the point 1, my line would be right here. So at 1, the what we're saying is that there is a positive slope. Um, and yeah, well, we're saying there's a positive slope there of this line that's, that's tangent, which means tangent means touching it exactly at exactly one point at x equals one. The line tangent to this has a positive slope. So does at two. If we look at that tangent line right here, approximately, okay, that also has a positive slope, but it also has a steeper slope. Okay, if we look at at zero at the slope at the line adjacent um, we should have a horizontal line so that that line that's tangent there would be actually y equals zero um, and would have a slope of zero so that one we'd be able to find really easily at negative one we have a negative slope here and at negative two hey look here's a slope well, what if we want to actually be able to figure out what these numbers are? What are these slopes? That is the instantaneous velocity if this was talking about, you know, a position graph. That would be the instantaneous velocity. Uh, so that brings us to when can we not actually find a derivative for something or when can we not actually find the instantaneous rate of change of something? So, uh, the concept is differentiable versus not differentiable. Differentiable means that you can take the derivative of something, okay? Not differentiable means that we can't take the derivative of something. So, I have three functions here, and I've got written out here. Some functions cannot be differentiated at certain points. Um, this happens where the graph makes a sharp turn. So, this right here is a sharp turn. Um, because I can't really talk about a line that is tangent here like you I mean I can draw it but it's not a curve there so we say that's not like I can't actually find the slope of that right there um, the another place it happens is a, a jump discontinuity which we talked about a while ago and that's this example right here where how do I draw a, a line uh, that's tangent at zero in this case well I can't I could draw one over here or I can draw one over here but specifically at zero I can't actually draw a tangent line to this graph uh, and then last where the tangent line would be a vertical line which a vertical line has an undefined slope so if we're talking about slopes basically uh, then we can't actually find it so here we would have a vertical line i know that's not really touching but i can't really make it do that so here it it would be an up and down line so it wouldn't it wouldn't work to do it like that so we're going to take that now and we're going to try to without actually calculating anything estimate the derivative of a function at a given point by interpreting it as the tangent line slope so let's look at this uh, function right here. So I'm going to go to y equals and I'm going to plug in negative 2x squared minus 2x plus 5 and it says in the instructions and there's a part in here in your book that says to do this to put your function in a square viewing window. So go to zoom and do the fifth option for square. And let's look and see what we have. Okay, so this is a parabola that's opening down. We want to we want to say what we think the derivative is at two. So I think if I no, apparently not. If we trace and we type in 2, yes, we can figure out where 2 is. Okay, 2 is down here. So, basically, it's really hard to give an accurate answer for the slope, but we can definitely know is the slope of the tangent line at this point, is it going to be positive or negative? Well, our graph is decreasing at this point, so this would be a negative uh, a negative slope. It also is decrease, decreasing pretty fast. It almost looks vertical, but not quite. So, I mean, we could really say almost almost anything if we wanted to, but I mean, let's call it 
um, let's say that f prime of 2, because we're talking about the slope at the point 2, let's say that that would be like, I don't know, negative 8, something like that, because it's, it's negative, it's really steep at that point. Um, if we looked at some other places on the graph, like over here, we would have put, we would have had to say it was a positive, or up here at the top, we would have to say that the slope of that would be zero. So geometrically or, or visually, that's what we're talking about when we talk about derivatives. So we're going to do some rocket science now. Uh, a toy rocket is launched straight up in the air from level ground. The distance in feet, the rocket is above the ground. The position function is f of t equals 170t minus 16t squared at any time t in seconds. Find these two things, f prime of zero and the initial velocity of the rocket. So what's really neat, and you'll get into this in calculus, is, is where these things come from, um, these numbers. Uh, for example, this negative 16 t squared, that is half of the acceleration of gravity. If we're using, um, that's not how you spell gravity. If we're using feet per seconds, per seconds, I believe feet per second squared. If you've done physics, then you, that should be a familiar thing, that, that negative 32 you use as the acceleration of gravity, um, and so we're using half of that, and that's what that number is going to be most of the time, unless you're in meters. Um, and then this other number has some significance too, but we're going to do the problem before we actually say what that significant is. significance is. We want to find f prime of zero, so we're going to use that limit definition from an earlier slide. We're going to say f prime of 0 is the limit as x approaches 0 of f of t minus f of 0 over t minus 0. Okay, so let's figure out what this actually is. The limit as x approaches 0 f of t is 170t minus 16t squared. If I plug in 0 here for f of 0, I get 0. So it's like we have a minus 0 here, but that's not actually going to affect anything, so let's not even put it and save ourselves some writing. On the bottom, t minus 0 is t. Well, what we can do here is factor out a t on top. which will let us cancel out our t's, that the t on the outside was a t down here, so that equals the limit as, I was saying x on this, I meant t, it's hard to get out of the habit of limits being x, so limit as t approaches 0 of 170 minus 16t, if you plug in 0 well, so that you can evaluate the limit, which means our limit notation goes away, if you plug in 0, you get 170. So 170 feet per seconds is our initial velocity, well, is our, is our velocity at 0. That's what we just found, so that's A. But think about it. What is initial velocity? Initial velocity is our velocity at 0, so this would also be 170 feet per second. Um, and so, hey, look, this number right here, that's our initial velocity. If we had a number out here on either side, that would tell us our starting position. Like, if, if, we, were, if we were launching the rocket from, like, a 10-foot platform, we would put plus 10 up here. So that's how you do rocket science, because um, I think all of you really, really wanted to know about it.